Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, and today the topic is Schradig. Now, I want to make sure that you know that in German, which that name is from, it is pronounced Schradig and not Schradig, as I oftentimes hear from my students. No, it's Schradig, Henry Schradig. Okay, we all know the exercises, or if you don't, please get acquainted with them. They're great. Uh, so we're talking about the School of, of Violin Techniques, um, Dexterity, Developing Dexterity, and of course it's Book 1, and our famous exercise number 1. Exercise number 1 uh, is in 25 tiny small exercises, so that all comprises exercise number 1, and that's what we're talking and showing today. So we know that these exercises are pro promoting dexterity, which means velocity, which means how much speed we can use in our left hand. Uh, however, if you have any technical problems, this is also the great place to fix them, to use this material to fix your technical problems. For instance, if you have a weak fourth finger, which a lot of people do, uh, and here I would uh, refer you to my Milstein, exercises, right, to make sure that your uh, forefinger is properly supported. So this again, you will, uh, after doing this exercise, you will segue to Shradik and you will use your new setup in these exercises, okay? If you are working on the relaxing of your left hand and cleaning out, uh, cleaning up your mechanics, uh, how you move the fingers and how you take them off and how you put them on and all that, uh, so that no, uh, remembering that no finger should be pressing on the string while it's not being audible, while another finger is playing, right? The fingers are light here, and when they come off the string, the string they should be springing off the string. So that uh, portion I talked about in my videos on the basics um, of the left hand. Please watch those. Uh, so if you are working on these basic issues. Shadik again, is the best material that you can use. And here I will show you how you will use it for different purposes. So very important thing is that it, to be able to start very slowly uh, with exact goals in mind. And um, if you're working on mechanics, that would be it. So for instance, for that, I would recommend that you will not think about Shadik the way it's written. It's written, as you can see, in 16 notes. However, for your purposes, if you're working to clean up your motions, to clean up your mechanics, or to get used to them whichever way, you want to think about each 16 note as a quarter note. And for that, your tempo will be quarter note, or your 16 notes rather, equal 40. You will use two notes per bow, and it will go like this. So in this case, uh, when the tempo is so slow, I believe it is perfectly okay to cut the number of the repetitions that are here on the page. For instance, the first exercise, the small first exercise, uh, is uh, a lot of repetitions in itself. If you just do this once, what I just did, that may be enough, and you can go to the second exercise, and again, you can cut portions of that in this slow tempo only. Then you start gradually accelerating the tempo, of course, but very gradually. I do recommend metronome. It will keep you in line. It will not allow you to skip to too fast, too soon, and again, uh, get some unnecessary tension and mistakes and all that bad stuff that happens to us. So you go like that until you reach 80. So uh, 16 notes uh, was now, is now, sorry, 80. And of course, now you switch to 40 again, but now you are already in eight notes. So here you are. So that is the springing action of the fingers here. Still, the tempo is still really slow. 
Again, you keep accelerating the tempo. Now, how do you do this, by the way? How do you accelerate the tempo? You can do it gradually on each little exercise. Actually, it is quite okay. Just play one at 40, second one at 42, next one at 43 or 44, depending on how your metronome is working, and so on. And at, until you feel like, oh, it's a little bit too fast, I cannot process how I'm putting my fingers. If that happens, stop here, you will start restart from that tomorrow, okay? Don't push at all, uh, be with, uh, don't play without utter concentration. The concentration and focus and preparation and thinking have to be always there. Don't play shradic thoughtlessly. Oh, I just will let my fingers run. Absolutely not. You will uh, just only damage it, uh, damage the technique. Okay, so um, we go like that until now eight, eighth note reaches 70. At 70, of course, what happens? We will go finally to the quarter notes and you finally will think, okay, and now I will be in 16 notes like it's written and the tempo here will be then 35, right? So a quarter note is 35 and that put me at 36. And again, still very slow tempo, but now you are going to be in uh, quarter notes. <laughs> And so forth. As you noticed, I did cut uh, half of the first exercise. Again, for the same reason, it's very slow still. Okay, so now also you notice, of course, that at this point your bow moves quite much faster. Okay, so that is the tempo at which you might um, either keep still at four or try to go in slow eight. Slow eight will be the bow slow eight, not the left hand, it stays the same. So you will need to uh, decide if it's more comfortable to switch to 8 here or not quite. The problem is that we need to use the whole bow. That's the thing. We need to use the whole bow. You cannot be just reducing the amount of the bow. It's not a good idea you want to use, right? So then if it's a bit too slow for the bow, well, then you will go a bit faster and you'll reach 40, let's say 44 and there you will switch to eight notes and it will be, I will show the second one. And so on. Okay. Next thing, um, next thing is the same thing. We keep accelerating. So how long will you be playing in eight notes? In eight notes you'll be playing, by the way, of course, you'll be playing the whole 25 little exercises, correct? And uh, I'll tell you later how you can avoid the boredom of playing the same music all the time. That's coming up next. Uh, but right now, acceleration keeps going on and we are reaching um, 80. A quarter note equals 80 and it's right here. So here we are, eight notes per bow so far. Or the same thing in 16. So for most people, for most people I find that 16 is more comfortable because the right hand again slows down and feels cal cal calm and that's what we want. And then you will keep uh, 16 notes per bow until you reach either 120 or even more, 130. And you may ask me, like, how fa far will you go with this acceleration business? Well, the um, really good left hand dexterity will be achieved when you get to play the whole number one exercise, which means all the little 25 exercises in one after another without repeats, but one after another and uh, consecutively in 160. Quarter note equals 160. It's a tough, tough road, but it's definitely doable. And all of those who have to achieve this are very happy with the workings of their left hand. I don't recommend necessarily to go past 160, uh, but if you want to try how well your left hand got developed, of course, you can uh, see, you know, when you play 32 notes per bow in already fast tempo. So 
that would be the 64 notes on the bow, but I really don't think it's very practical and useful for anything, just to kind of to show off that you can. That's, that's a good thing. This is it for today. And in the next video about shredding, I will be talking about how not to get bored and what kind of patterns you can use, very helpful patterns, on just this exercise to make it so versatile and so amazing that everybody improves greatly on it. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you all later.